We're Dennis and Liz, full-time reviewers traveling across North America in our renovated Class C RV. Last week, we left Colorado to RV Monument Valley, except we discovered after arriving that it was closed because of COVID. Learn from us. Don't make silly mistakes. Check that places are open, especially when it's in weird times like COVID. We made the most of our overnight stay and went right back to Colorado, where we were greeted by gorgeous fall colors, moose, oh my God, there's a moose, and delicious beer. This week's video picks up in Colorado at Mesa Verde National Park, where we explore the history of the ancient Puebloan peoples of the Four Corners. Imagine all the dancing and all the lights coming from the little cliff dwellings all throughout the canyon. It would have been magical to experience. The Sleeping Ute Mountain on one side, canyons on another side, what looks like something you'd see in Arches National Park on these cliff sides on, on you know, in another direction, and then dotted inside of those cool little ancient pueblos. It's so rad. Well, hello there. Welcome to today's vlog, coming to you from an RV repair shop. That's right. Outside of Mesa Verde. Yep. We're in Cortez, Colorado, and we're getting our generator worked on because last night it did something weird to where it was still powering the coach through the inverter, but it, the inverter wasn't allowing it to charge the batteries. I messed with it until probably almost 10 o'clock last night. It's back in charge mode. Back out. Like it, it starts and then it just instantly stops. Back on. Back off! And then we just couldn't run the generator any longer because we're on a BLM and I couldn't get it working. And now we're Yeah, here. we tried to turn it on again this morning and then when we did, we were having the same problem and then the generator just turned off altogether on its own. Yeah, it just wouldn't even stay running. So we figured this is about the time that we need to go to a pro. So we found someone in Cortez, luckily, that was able to see us the same day. He's gonna service the generator, make yeah, sure it's working service. right. It did shut itself down once and it threw a code and it threw a service code. I didn't even know that these Cummins own in generators would throw service codes, uh, but they do. It's an easy thing to figure out the code. So if the generator shuts itself down, um, the start button on the generator itself will flash three times, letting you know that there is a code. If you push the stop prime side of the start button, it will flash another code and then you just count how many times it flashes and you can reference a chart that you can easily find online and it'll tell you what the generator thinks Oh, that's the nice. Is. I wish you would have known that. That's cool. Did you well, know that? Yeah, but the code it threw was a service. They said, oh, so we said still have to service check. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known what the heck that meant. But We're here. We're getting it fixed. Yep. I'm glad that we're able to get this resolved quickly. This was one of the checklists I wanted to get done before we went back into Mexico anyway. So fine. Let's just do it. Check. Check. Once we get this done, we will take you back to our BLM, show you around there, and then tomorrow we're going to do lots of exploring in and around this area. <laughs> We are actually at a BLM just across the road from Mesa Verde National Park. Yep. We stayed here two years ago. It's a bit it's of a tight, bumpy road, it's bumpy. but it's doable. This is BLM land, completely free, but there is no services. You'll see designated campgrounds that actually have numbers for each camping spot. I think there's 13 designated spots that you can choose from. Make you sure you stay in one of those camp spots. Don't pull off and make your own camp spot because you're actually camping in an ancient cedar forest. These are some of the biggest cedar or juniper trees that I have ever seen. So respect it, stay in a, stay in a designated campsite that's already been downtrodden and broken in. And of course, mm -hmm. leave it better than you found it. Pack out your trash, good public lands etiquette, please. But we are going to be taking you with us today to explore Mesa Verde National Park. We've been here before, so we kind of have an idea of what to expect, but we're really excited to just get to re-experience mm -hmm. these amazing cliff dwellings. Yeah. I hope you're ready for a fun adventure for today. Let's hop on the scooter and head over. Let's see some things.
of Mesa Verde Park, which is actually before you even get to the cliff dwellings. It was about a 20 minute drive up here and it is officially fall. Yeah. Even here, it was beautiful driving through the roads and seeing all of the orange, red, yellow. It feels nice on the Mesa Top. Down in the campground, it was like 89 degrees and now it's like 76. Really? Yeah. Mm. Well, yes, for being September, everywhere we just came from was really cool and here it's definitely warm, but a night it drops and it's leaving beautiful evidence of fall. From there, we scooted over to Mesa Top Loop, which shows the evolution of Pueblo construction. Puebloan dwellings started as underground pit houses around 550 AD, eventually transitioning into above ground dwellings before becoming the magnificent cliff dwellings that Mesa Verde and the ancestral Puebloan peoples are famous for today. It may not look like much now, but the pit houses scattered throughout this area were thriving communities, with thousands of ancient Puebloans farming and living here, growing crops like corn, squash, and beans, known as the Three Sisters, and trading with other tribes as far as the Pacific Coast and Mexico. Historians believe that there were more ancient Puebloans living thousands of years ago in this area than the number of people who live here today. As their architectural skills improved, they eventually moved into the cliff dwelling style homes about 600 years later. The site we're at now is called the Square Tower House. They built this one around 1200 AD. Now, a lot of people, including myself, would ask how the heck did they get down to this thing from the mesa top? They actually had a system of ropes and ladders that would bring them from the top of the mesa down to the dwelling itself. But there are literally tons of different Pueblos sprinkled all inside of these canyons that if you just rip down this road to get to the next icon spot, you're totally gonna miss. So this one is called a firehouse and you can actually still see where they've carved out the hand and foot holes where they would climb up the sides of the cliff to get to the different levels of the dwelling. This one also was where they had public gatherings. So in this canyon, there's hundreds of cliff dwellings where each like group or family or Pueblo would inhabit and then they would all meet here to do ceremonial activities, dancing, celebrations. Traditionally, if you come to Mesa Verde, you know, pre, post pandemic, <laughs> there'll be options to take tours in a few of the cliff dwellings, including this one, which is Cliff Palace. Unfortunately, with COVID, they're just not allowing tours at this time. It is suggested though, if they are having tours when you visit, to pre-book, because these are very popular ways to experience this national park. Just where it was hard to even imagine. I mean, I guess it's not. This was like a city. This, this entire canyon was just filled with different neighborhoods, different dwellings. There's over 4,700 archeological sites in this canyon alone. It's incredible. Imagine all the dancing and all the lights coming from the little cliff dwellings all throughout the canyon. It would have been magical to experience. Next to the museum, which we do recommend visiting, unfortunately it's closed right now, but we did visit two years ago and it is definitely worth a stop. You can find the Spruce Tree House, which is the most well-preserved of all of the cliff dwellings here. And if you're really lucky and coming during December, the second Thursday of every December, they do a special luminary where they actually light up Spruce Tree House with candles. So you can really take in and experience what it would have been like when it was inhabited by the ancestral Pueblo people. It's definitely a bucket worthy activity. We want to come back so badly for this. Again, this year they're not doing it because of COVID, but hopefully you're watching this and can add it to your list in the future. After exploring Mesa Verde, we're ready for some grub. So we're gonna take the hour drive back to the campground, which by the way, Make sure you have enough time when you come here because getting to the actual cliff dwellings that you probably want to see, it's going to take you at least 45 minutes to an hour. And there's so much to see that you definitely need pretty much like a full day to explore here. So if you're coming here thinking you can get this all done in just a few hours, 
you're gonna miss a lot. We're back at the house and tonight's dinner is a pizza. Dennis made fresh sourdough and whenever he has sourdough bread that he's going to bake, he always ends up making an extra sourdough pizza. So we par baked the sourdough bread just because our oven, we don't have a pizza stone and our oven doesn't get quite hot enough to like cook it like how we, you know, like that crisp pizza unless we pre-bake it. And tonight we're putting a little bit of Mount Vico's red pepper feta spread as the base. I have artichoke hearts, olives, and we'll do a little bit of drizzle with garlic olive oil on top, mozzarella of course, and call it a night. I love pizza nights. this thing to work all right another three-quarter full bag of trash that I picked up actually just from one single campsite here on the Mesa Verde boundary BLM please if you're gonna come out here and enjoy these BLM and free camping dispersed sites pick up after yourself if a critter gets into your trash bag and strows it pick that up before you leave pack out your trash because it never ceases to amaze me how much garbage is left on these campsites. And this is the kind of misuse that's going to get all of our free dispersed and BLM camping sites shut down. So if you're like me and seeing trash on these BLM and dispersed camping campsites bothers you, just go ahead and pick up a little bit. It does a world of difference. And if we all did this each time we came to one of these sites, it would make a huge difference and we wouldn't have any more problems. I, I didn't leave any of this trash here, but I don't mind picking it up because I know when I leave, this, this site is way better than it was when I got here. And that means something to me. But we're out of water. We've been here actually totally like out of water. almost I think six nights. We're getting really good at making our water last. We're practicing more and more. 29 gallons is gonna go a long way now. It's stretching pretty far, yeah. But we are like totally out of water. We can't even do the dishes from last yeah. night. So we're leaving this BLM. We're gonna go into town, dump, fill up water. And then we are going to be parking just about 30 minutes away at near a national monument that has more um, dwellings from the ancestral Pueblo people. Yep. So we're excited to show you a new place. It's mm. the Canyons of the Ancients and it's a national monument we didn't yep. know existed. So let's run our errands and take you on a fun hike today. Let's do it. Errands are going marvelously. We were like checking things off the list. We've dumped, we filled up water, we got more diesel and we got propane. All of that took like, no joke, 20 minutes. So now we are on to our laundry, but we just wanted to show you guys the complete chaos we're in. This RV is disgusting. I can't wait to deep clean. We need to go to recycling as well. To, that'll get rid of some of the clutter, but it's a mess. This is like embarrassingly disgusting. This is the probably the worst. I think this is the dirtiest and most cluttered it's ever been. Cleaning up the mess I made. Hey. I'll just have to start over again. We're starting our hike to the Ancient Canyons Trail. The trailhead is actually called Sand Canyon and it's about a 12 mile hike out and back. It's about a 2,000 foot elevation gain. There's supposed to be some pretty gnarly switchbacks and it goes almost pretty much into the town of Cortez. We are not doing the full hike. We're only going about three miles in, which is where you can see a ton of the ancient pueblos here in this area, which should be a pretty rewarding little hike. Six miles round trip, not too high in elevation. We actually got lost twice. So we went back, we downloaded our all trails map and we are on the right path now. Now let's enjoy the hike without getting lost. Just so you know, we got lost because we didn't realize that we were on a spur trail that takes you through one of the ancient Pueblos and then back to the main trail. So keep that in mind. If you see white markers, those are the spur trails that lead you to points of interest and then back to the orange markers, which are actually yellow on the map, <laughs> which is the main trail.
a really nice hike so far once we figured out the path and the right way to go. There's just tons of different little cutoffs. Sometimes there'll be ruins there that you can actually get extremely close to. It's incredible to see how close you can get and what they would have looked like or how they used how they to be used. Lived. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one is a beautiful canyon overlook. Some of them haven't had anything. Maybe if you like a keen eye for archaeological sites, you might notice something that for us, the plain eye, just beautiful scenery all around. I will definitely say that the Pueblo ruins are like the cherries on top of each part of this hike. Totally. Um, the scenery and the journey there is the meat and potatoes because it's super beautiful out here. It feels got, very Western. You got the Sleeping Ute Mountain on one side, canyons on another side, what looks like something you'd see in Arches National Park on these cliff sides on, on you know, in another direction, and then dotted inside of those are these cool little ancient pueblos. It's so rad. Yeah, it's definitely worth a stop. It's, you can make it be as short of a hike or as long as of a hike as you want. There's all different kind of like side hikes you can take as well. So definitely don't pass through this area if you're, if you're coming through it. It's worth a, worth a stop. We made it back to the RV after an excellent hike and wonderful time in the Cortez Mesa Verde area. I think this is where we're going to sign off this week's vlog. Yeah. We're going to go take a shower, sleep at Walmart again, eat some dinner. And then we're headed to Flagstaff, right? Yeah, so next week we'll be picking you up in our vlog starting in Arizona. We have some exciting things planned to see and do there, but even more exciting news to share with you. We hope you're safe and well wherever you are. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> this rock. Well, we know what we think it looks like, but what do you think it looks like? It's a pretty darn good rattlesnake.